This is Dick Dunamo, the fifth dimensional man. And unless you're a filthy communist, you'll listen to us on the Sonic Society. This Justin from the future. Dick Dynamo was the premier test pilot for the USAF. On the mission in the new experimental AS-400 rocket, a malfunction occurred, thrusting him into a tear in the fabric of time and space. It was there that he acquired knowledge of the fifth dimensional arts. And now, with his computational briefcase possessing powers far beyond those of mere mortal briefcases, he is... Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man! Petunia! Yes, Mayor White. I need you to set up my speech for the ribbon cutting this afternoon. Yes, sir. To pick up my pinstripe suit over at the cleaners right? and spit shine my shoes the way I like it. Okay. And Johnson over an accountant still needs that report. Okay. Petunia. Yes, sir. What have I told you about those loafers? Remember, high heels and a low cut blouse make the secretary. Oh, yes, sir. Don't forget to pick out my dinner. Right. Something not too heavy on the starches. Right. I have to keep my merrily figure for the ladies' luncheon next week. Yes, sir. I've been wanting to try the new wholesome food store down the street. Sure, sure. And when you get back here, we'll work on your golf swing. Oh, and Pat, does this look infected to you? Pat? Petunia? The name is Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man. I'm a cosmic troubleshooter. I hunt down trouble and I shoot it in the face. It was a hot, muggy Wednesday afternoon. The kind you want to spend inside the office making love to a fine Venusian bourbon straight from Neptune. I had just polished off the fifth bottle when the briefcase lit up and told me there was an incoming message. There's a call, Quint. Come in, Dick Dynamo. Come in. Please, I need your help. Ah, Mayor White. I attended the ribbon cutting at the orphan detention facility last week. And I must say, I've heard more eloquent speeches. And I hadn't seen you dressed that badly since press caught you in the harlot house. Cut the comedy, you lousy sap. This is a matter of intergalactical security. My secretary has gone missing. Petunia? That blonde bombshell? She had legs like a sultry space giraffe. Space giraffes. Now listen up, Dick. She's been missing since last Tuesday. Yeah? What do you know about it? She was heading to accounting, the cleaners, and then to the health food store. Hmm. Health food store. Why was she going to a place like that? Only communists and hoolums frequent those dives. Now there's a likely place to begin my investigation. Careful, Dick. Those baby-eating pinkos can smell a quint coming from a mile off. Mayor, do I look like a rook to you? I do more than travel through five dimensions. I'm a master of disguise! Hey, Dad, who is this? How did you get on my private line? Mayor, it's me, Dick Donimo. Or, should I say Daisy Donimo? Well, if that doesn't beat all... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looked like the Quint had a case. I put on my Sunday best and made it to the store in ten minutes flat. Serve you today. Oh, hello there, sir. 
I'm a woman named Daisy Dynamo. I was just passing by your fine establishment, and I thought I would come in to look at your not meat products. Observation: It appears you need shaving products for your man beard. Oh my! Oh dear! No! 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 My husband enjoys the stubble. Uh, never mind me. I'll just find my way around. That was a close one. I quickly darted down a side aisle, away from this strangely alluring metallic man, keeping my eyes peeled for anything suspicious. But how does one spot something unusual in a store full of every fruitcake and rejected dame that mankind has ever produced? I wandered toward the fruits and vegetables section, finally stopping before a bin of small, hard yellow bananas called plantons, when suddenly... I quickly dove underneath a produce stand as the metal men passed by. One more second, Dick Dynamo, and you would have been singing in the rain. Permanently. But then, I noticed I wasn't alone. Oh, good gracious! Oh my, I didn't notice you under here, darling. But no, I'm hiding here. It's not big enough for two women. You have to leave right now. Get out of here. Ow! Oh. Calm down, doll. I looked into her deep blue eyes. I don't know what it was. Maybe the pouty look or the sudden blush in her cheeks. But my eyes slowly caressed her face down to her plump lips and then... Oh my, I didn't realize that you were Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man, also known as Quint. That must be your computational briefcase. Well, it looks like you've got my number, sweetheart, but what about you? Why are you hiding that pretty face back here behind a bunch of produce at this establishment? My name is Tess. I'm here looking for my missing... How about you bite your lip and tell me what you know about Petunia O'Malley? What? Who? Who are you talking about? Calm down! You want to blow our cover? Sorry, you're right. I... I don't know what came over me. I... uh, Okay. I came here looking for a missing person, but it looks like I found nothing more than a hysterical dame. Forget your purse, honey knockers. Let's both of us get out of here so I can slip into something more comfortable, like pants. All right, Tess, keep your cool and walk in front of me. I'm just going to grab a few items to make this look legit. Greetings again, awkward female. Did you enjoy your shopping activity? Oh my, yes. Wonderful place you have here. I have decided to purchase these items. Excellent. Let me view your selections. One unit of spinach. Oh, wow! You must have your leafy greens! One unit of tofu. I do love Mexican food! And one unit of sterile pads. Oh, mom. They're for my wife! My angel demands wings! Here is your change, ma'am. The cashier handed me back my change. Something didn't add up. Two, three, excuse me, sir, it looks like you gave me slightly too much change. Here, let me give you some back. What happened? A Dick Dynamo special, that's what happened. Alert, alert, manager to register one. Alert, alert, Delta five. Please repeat last page. Delta 5, lockdown mode, launch sequence initiated. Oh no, all the doors have closed and everyone's trapped inside. What are we going to do? My god, the whole place is shaking. Wait a second, this is a giant spaceship! Tess, cling to my chest, we're taking off! of Dick Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man. This Justin from the Future is brought to you by Asbestomax Cola, 
as Pestamax, a sure cure for melancholy. Just ask Gay Le Fay, the bright young Hollywood starlet, in Paradigm's new picture, Gay on Broadway. I just love that new asbestos. And here's a tip to you gals. It also starches clothes. And now back to the adventures of Dick Gonimo, the fifth dimensional man. Been traveling for days. Feels like a dream. This window is the only thing linking me to the outside world. The stars is so beautiful, Quint. I think I see something coming towards the ship. Move. Please, Dick, just one moment longer. Oh, wait a minute. Aren't you Tess, the third dimensional woman? Oh, sorry. No, here, let me see your computational purse. Hello, purse. Come in, purse. Hmm? I guess not. I'll let you have the window. It's okay, Tess. Some people just can't comprehend stars, science, and stuff moving closer together. It feels like the ship is slowing down. What can you see? I do think I see something. Five, four, hold on to something. Ow! I sprained both my ankles! The doors are sliding open. Quick, Tess. Get in front of me. Afraid. I've been tortured by Kazonians from Alpha Centauri 7. These Rigelians don't scare me. Rigelians? Of course they are. I could tell when the cashier couldn't count my change. Everyone knows that Rigelians can't count change. On your feet, Tess. Congratulations, shoppers! Welcome to Rigelate. You are all our 100th customer. As a token of our appreciation, you have won a free timeshare. Just step outside to claim your prize. Tess, don't believe him. It's a trap. Quickly now, step outside and get in line. The first ten will get a free Teflon-coated cooking set. Everyone's leaving. Rigelians aren't known for their generosity with housewares. If only I knew what they were up to. Ah, you two are just who we've been waiting for. You've been selected to win our bagless vacuum cleaners from the future. Ah! Oh, wait, wait, let's go! What? Stay here. What? What? Brown! Ah! Tess! No! She tore away from me like a wolf gnawing her way out of a bear trap. And she didn't even leave a fruit basket. All right. You fooled her. But I'm not budging. All right, meat apple. If you aren't coming out, we're coming in to make you come out. Come on in and get me, giant robot men. It'll take more than your eight arms, glowing eyes, and firm balance to stop the Quint. Come on down the Fist City. Population you. Oh, brethren. The Overlord wants this one alive. You'll never take me. Hey, I know he's wearing a dress, but isn't that Dick Dynamo? Ah, uh, yes. Quint, the fourth dimensional man. That's the fifth. Oh. Wake up, my little fleshling. I found myself on a large plate, decked out in a tinfoil suit and drenched in a sweet, succulent butter sauce. Around me, dozens of cherry tomatoes floated like large buoys in a sea of leafy greens. Robots scampered among the hills of green roughage, carrying croutons the size of cinder blocks. Looks like I'm dressed for dinner. Who's hosting this shindig? Up here, my little minuscule morsel. My eyes scan upward to the monocular gaze of a corpulent, 60-foot-tall alien. He was seated in a gigantic pleather lounge chair, 
smoking a cigarette the size of the Washington Monument. The monster's massive orange belly heaved as his labored breathing engulfed me in a cacophony of sound. I am the Rigilian's overlord. You may address me as the overlord. My army of robot drones assist me in running a chain of gourmet restaurants. I use wholesome food stores to lure in my main ingredients. But you, man bacon, are a rare delicacy. You shall become my fifth dimensional feast. Well, that's a real honor, Tubby. You may call me the Quint. Would you mind honoring a condemned man's last request before dinner? Of course. I'd love a flavorful, freshly packed tar mine cigarette. Ah, of course. The fresh curiosity of cigarettes will enhance your flavor. Mmm, tasty. Tar mine tasty. So, why kidnap people out of health food stores? Why not? No one in the galaxy would miss a vegetarian and their herbal flavor is irresistible. Ah, uh, you clever bastard. Well, I believe this is enough chit-chat. Now you will be taken to be tenderized. You look a little tough. Tough as nails. But I haven't finished the cigarette. Maybe you should give it a try. <laughs> the extra fresh tires created massive venacity in my one gigantic bulbous eye. I can't see. This was my chance. I leapt to the door like a wino at the sound of falling change. I found myself in a gargantuan dining hall with tables of feasting aliens. Each table was being served by flying pods, not unlike giant salad bowls. The pods streamed in from slots in the walls and delivered their limp-wristed, iron-deficient human cargo to the waiting plates of hungry gourmands. Their toothy malls echoed with the screams of helpless victims. Hey, Quinn! Hey, Petunia! Are those new pants? That Petunia sure is a doll. I tailed the giant busboy as he headed for the swinging doors at the back of the dining hall. Before my eyes was a city skyline of huge countertops. Steam from cooking pots wafted above me like a San Fran fog. Towering ice boxes dwarfed gigantic serving carts which were laden with salt shakers the size of ocean liners and lettuce that looked like moons. I spotted another door at the back of the room and made a dash for it. Hold on! I haven't met a door yet that my briefcase couldn't crack. Let's see here. My vision was obscured by drizzling gravy from an overhead sprinkler system. I had to find her. Quint! You! I tenderly wiped the gravy from her face. Her eyes fluttered as she tried to look up at me. Delicious. Stop the presses! Who's this little guy holding onto your leg? Mommy, is that my daddy? Calm down, kid! You're hysterical! Here, have a tar mine cigarette. The cigarette of choice for millions of true-blooded Americans. Dick, I've, I've been meaning to tell you. Who's this little scamp? Is he your nephew? No, Dick, he's my son. Your cousin? N my son. Your second aunt's nephew? No, uh, never mind. You came to save us. Wait a minute. Good gravy! Is that your son? Are you a single mother? How do you sleep at night? It's all true. I went to the health food store to find my missing son, and now I found him. But now that you're here, we can- Babe, there is no we 
and unwed. I'm sorry, it's over. There's just no place on earth for people like you. I know I've made terrible mistakes by my wretched, dirty past of immorality and my son's silly birth, but in our short time together, I saw past that stony edifice you show to the world, and I saw Dick, a man who strives for the greater good, a man I want to stand by, a man of strength I can cling to who understands that my past is the past. We can become shining examples of tolerance and selfless love to the future. Please, Dick. Please, maybe you can give us a second chance. I, I'm not good at speeches, just kiss me. You know, maybe, just maybe. Guess that was a dead end. My plan now involved hijacking one of the last salad bowl spaceships and making it to sweet, meaty freedom. But the refugees from the cage were circling the pod like a pack of rabid baboons. Baboons with gravy. And there was only room for one. As I was surveying the situation, one of the savages challenged me. Hey, um, Quint? I was just wondering if you knew how we could open the plastic wrap to load the ship and maybe find a way off this place. That's when I knew. The volcano of Mount St. Pandemonium was about to erupt. I'd have to act fast. Could you please take my baby? Sure. If you take one of these... She tossed the baby in the air. I snatched it by the leg and whirled it above my head like a medieval knight, charging into battle. Oh my god, what's he doing with that baby? I puffed up my cheeks like the mighty beta fish and girded my loins for battle. I whipped the baby into an onrusher's head like David to Goliath. They were all over me now, so I delivered an elbow to the teeth of the lady behind me, then crushed in the knee of the one before me. The animals fought like the devil incarnate. This chain is out of control! The foul demons piled upon me like a reeking tide of guava nectar. I sank to my knees under their crushing weight. Like hell we are! Tapping into my innermost well of man strength, I burst from the pack, tossing my assailants into the air. A battle cry erupted from my throat. No, please, leave me alone! My Aztec blood poured forth the energy of a thousand western races. Grabbing a prosthetic leg, I hefted it above my head like a morbid trophy and brought it down on its owner's head. The sickening thump fueled my righteous anger and then laid into my enemy anew. The door to the pod was before me, but between us was two elderly furies. Excuse me, young man! I seized their hairpin hats and clapped their heads together like waves upon the rocky shores. I kicked the lifeless carcasses aside to make way for the hatch door to the craft. I opened it and dove inside. <sighs> Briefcase. Do a systems check. Those poor souls outside. If only I could have gotten to them before it was too late. Dick. Anti-gravity enabled. Capacity of 200 not exceeded. Adjusting oxygen levels accordingly. Saran seal fresh locked. Left headlight partially obscured by carbon residue and calcium shards. Operational yet not optimum. Well, we surely can't escape from doom with dirty headlights, can we? Door is now open. Ah, spotless. Door is now closed. I utilized a barrel-sized olive as a seat and settled into the squishy pimento. Long story short, that's how I solved the case. Well, thank you very much, Quint. You saved the day. And, uh, thanks for the casserole. It's mighty tasty. But, um, 
Whatever happened to my secretary, Petunia? Well, I found her. But let's just put it this way. She made dinner. is created and produced in sunny Rogers, Arkansas. All the important stuff is done by John Baker, Grant Cottrell, Elton Calger, David Daniels, Anthony Myers, and the woman is J.C. Dalton. Special thanks to Ginger Jones, Janelle Cottrell, Casey Baker, Parker Baker, and a nice try, Rob Paris. Maybe next time. Check out more Dick Dynamo at DickDynamo.com and on MySpace. And welcome back. My name is Jack Ward, and you're listening to the Sonic Society. And here on the phone we have this evening John Baker, Anthony Myers, Eldon Calger, J.C. Dalton, Grant Cottrell, and David Daniels isn't with them, but they all together make the team that creates Dick Dynamo, the show we're listening to this evening. How are you, folks? Yeah, it's good to have you all on the phone, or most of you on the phone. So where's where's the last member of your team? Uh, he's in China. He, he actually just called us from the future. Is he down there getting sound effects? Um, we were hoping he would. I don't, I don't think, I think he's going to be pretty busy. That's good. So tell me, what gets you guys involved in this crazy thing we call radio drama? Well, we all work at the same place, and we all have connected iTunes accounts. Now, normally we listen to our own music, but um, John Baker here, he uh, had a bunch of old OTR on his radio, when at first he introduced it to me and then everybody else, and we got started listening to shows like X-1 and Whistler and Beard Circle. Cool. Do you listen to Spaceship Radio? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Spaceship Radio does all X minus one stuff. Oh, wow. Andy's Andy's really good. If you get a chance, spaceshipradio.com. dot com. Out about the stuff that was we're listening to and get one all together and then talk about it after. AC was the major driving force behind that because me and John would always talk about it, like we about how cool it'd be to do a show, and then she just popped up one day and like, guys are gonna do a show. I'm an enabler. <laughs> ah, that's good. Good ideas, but they don't execute, so I make them execute stuff. Good for you. Good for you. John Baker cracks the whip the rest of the time. (laughs) (laughs) So do you all all write it? Do you all direct it? Do you all star in it? How does this work? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's definitely a group effort on all parts. Good. Well, who plays plays the main character, Dick Dynamo? That would be me, Eldon Calger. I'm also Dick Dynamo. Oh, excellent. And what other characters do we have to listen to that you guys play? For example, Anthony, what do you play? I play the uh, the creature, the one-eyed... Uh, a little boy. A little boy. Hi, mister. Thanks for the... Summer. And a robot. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. And a robot. Do I do a robot? That's, oh, a, a robot that's quite the range. One-eyed monster, robot, and little boy. Yeah. And an old lady. And an old lady. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, old lady. Yeah, right, right before Dick Dynamo smashes the two old women's heads together and uh, jumps in the spaceship, that's <laughs> That's great. So for those people who haven't heard Dick Dynamo and will be hearing it tonight, what do you what do you expect it to be? Is it a comedy? Is it a going to be sort of a more serious homage or an, hom- an homage to, uh, to the old-fashioned uh, stories of old? What did you envision it originally to be? It's a comedy that runs on our dreams and starlight. <laughs> Very cool. If no one else is saying anything. I'm getting ready to. God. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I guess our, our hopes are is we definitely want to keep it with the old-time radio feel, keep it locked in uh, with that genre, but uh, really uh, hit on the comedy aspect of some of the older uh, old-time radio stuff. Like uh, some of the stuff we always find is funny is in the old radio shows where they have cigarette commercials. Right. However, they feel like 9 out of 10 doctors prefer these cigarettes. Exactly, right. So we really want to keep it the old world. Yeah, in like a modern day. So do you, all those wacky stereotypes we've come to love. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys listen to Dakota Ring Theater? Uh, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, yeah, we have. 
Yeah. yeah, Dakota Ring that likes to be able to sort of give you a a new taste of an old style. And again, Greg Taylor does a lot of those shows on here. So if you like that kind of stuff, that's there. He's a great person to sort of emulate. He has a superhero himself called the Red Panda, right. and he also does a Blackjack Justice. So you're in good company for stuff like that. There's some really good. There's some really good stuff out there, and I'm glad to glad to have you aboard. So how long have you been listening to audio drama? Oh, I'd say about a year now. Oh. I've been listening to it over that. I started working. Or for me? Yeah, that's how long you've been coworkers. Oh wow, where do you work? Yeah, three or four years of full time radio, and in the past year we've gotten to we've discovered like the new modern dramas uh, that people are putting out. Yeah, you, you found us. Yeah. <laughs> which is which we're really thankful for. Thank you so much for finding us. So, JC, what what part do you play? I do all the girl parts that I can't get them to do high voices for. <laughs> I'm not happy about it because um, I'm I'm a writer, not a reader. Right. So yeah, I do girl parts, and um, I get Anthony's girlfriend Ginger to read some girl parts too, and then also Grant's wife Janelle. Oh, I great. can. That's awesome. So how many episodes do you see uh, Dick uh, being involved in? I have 10 ideas. Wow. But it's it's just hard to get it all concrete. Sure. Of course, every day we're coming up with all kinds of stuff. Serialize into a whole episode. Yeah. So. We're all designers and artists. So. The di- Dream Realm Enterprises presents a Purple Unicorn production. And now, coming to you live from the Rockefeller Center in Newark, New York City, it's the Robot News Update with your dueling news anchors, Fizz Gizzit and Frank Meltdown! Today in Robot News Bananas! Hey, wait a minute... Didn't we start this way last week? It just confirms what I already knew. You haven't got an original thought in your positronic network, Fizz, you floppy bottom binky boo. Well, that made a lot of sense, Frank. Why don't you bite me? Why, I ought to... And now, in other news, it's time once again for the Rob Report. Take it away, Rob. <laughs> ah, thank you, Fizz and Frank. Well, robots and robots... You won't believe where we're at today. You know, it's funny how we ended up here. I was talking to Bert, and I was getting tired, and I wanted to go to bed. And he thought I said that I want to go to Tibet. Well, that's where we're at. Well, we're in Tibet, and Tibet is located in China, and is also known as the roof of the world. We are told that the Yeti, the abominable snowman of the Himalayas, roam in this area that we are taping from. And did you know that the word Yeti in Tibetan means magical creature and is in the shape of a hairy, biped creature that resembles a giant ape and lives at altitudes of up to 20,000 feet. Now, we're not sure if one exists or not, but Bert... Bert, why did you put the camera down? Bert, why did you drop the camera? Bert, why, Bert, you, Bert, you got a funny look on your face, Bert. Bert, come back here. Why are you running away? Bert, what did you say? Bert, I can barely hear you. You said turn around. Why, why do I want to turn around? Bert, Bert, oh my God, Bert, it's a Yeti. It's here. Oh my, no, no, get away, get away, Bert. Bert, get back here. Prison Frank, talk to you later. Bert, get back here. It's Robots of the Company, episode number 307, Bot Opera, written by Jonathan Patrick Ruffle, Kyle Boers, and Vince Staten. No, Pat! How could she have lied to me this way? I trusted her! I gave that woman my heart! And These fembots are so heartless sometimes. But don't you worry, Excelsior. I'm your friend. And I'll be here to support you. I give you my word. Oh, thank you, my friend. What would I do without a true friend like you? You, 
You're such a true friend, you know. <laughs> and, and true friends are, are hard to come by. I owe you so much, dear friend. You owe me nothing, for it is my duty as a true friend to be such a friend that is true. <laughs> hey, Zimtra, why is everybody acting so strange today? I don't know what you mean, Grisco, my lad. Seems like a typical day aboard the ship to me. Yeah, as meaningless as usual. But, 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 c- c- can you help me, Payload? Sure, little buddy. What's the problem? I just don't get it. What's going on this week? I think you'll find that we're all tore up inside with worry over this whole paternity thing. Uh, right, okay. Uh, huh? I just hope we soon know whose bundle's real father is. It's not me, that's for sure. Or is it? Hmm, you know, come to think of it, I... I knew it. It was you who betrayed me. How could you do such a thing to a friend? <laughs> I want you to know that, that you've just broken the, the heart of the truest friend you ever had. And, and now you've betrayed a trust. A trust that cannot easily be mended. Now I'm really confused. Zintron? I'm sorry, Briscoe, my boy. But I can't explain my actions. I don't even know what my actions were to explain them. I, I think I'm pretty confused, too. Oh, boy. Look, Zimtron, there's no way that you could be Bundle's father. The evidence just doesn't match up. It doesn't? Look at yourself. You're a sink. Most of the time, you're permanently fused to the wall. You can't move. The day Bundle's was conceived, you were right there where you always are. We all saw you. Oh. Yes. That's right. Uh, But if... I'm not the father, then who is? Um... Oh, no. Don't look at me. I was right there with the rest of you that day. I am an innocent I speak. All right. It's time we got to the bottom of this. Commander Squeak, get in here on the double. That's an order. Hello, boys. I was just changing my darling little bundles. <clears throat> um, uh... Oh, did you boys need something? We'd like you to resolve a little mystery for us, Squeak, if you don't mind. Anything I can do to help. Who is Bundle's father? What? Oh, boy. I'll never get any of this. I'm going to clean out the toilets on Deck 10. You can tell me how this turns out later. Okay, Payload? Sure, little buddy. No problem. (laughs) You can give it to me straight, Squeak. I'll take it like a combat droid. Oh, honey... How could you think Bundle's daddy could be anyone else but you, Sugar Buttons? You you mean I'm the daddy? Well, of course you are. How did you get a silly idea in your head that it could be anybody else? Well, I... I... I don't know. Butch? Well, I, uh... I, I heard it from, uh, GD. GD? Don't look at me like that. Are you the one who started this nasty rumor? No. GD? I'm serious. Look, I'll show you exactly how it happened. Come over here and look into this flashback sequencer. Look into what? It's a new invention Boffin came up with. It takes the memories of any bot who puts his or her head on this groove here, and then it takes a scan of their positronic network, and then uses that data and the machine's unique ability to extrapolate the most logical, if somewhat far-fetched, scenario to construct the flashback sequence of the events and displays them neatly and conveniently on this screen here in the middle of the device. Okay, then. Let's see it. And on the next exciting installment of As the Galaxy Drifts... Oh, Rusto-15, won't you please leave Excalibrator 5 and run away to Electroland with me? But I can't run away with you, Jobot. But why? Because Excalibur 5 is having my baby bot. You rust bucket, you. How could you construct with that... Trampoline! I had no choice. I was greased up. 
Oh, the shame of it. You think you're ashamed. It's caliber five. What are you doing here? I have come to inform you that you are not the father of my baby bot. What? Stay tuned for the exciting conclusion right after these commercial messages. Arr, mute! Arr, I hate commercials. The suspense is just too much. Hey, you! Me? Yeah, you sawbones. I mean, can you believe it? Believe what? Hey, I was just passing by. I... Can you believe this revelation? I mean, who's the father of the baby bot? It's got me stumped. Baby bot? Oh, right, right, right. Uh, you mean, he's not really the father? Are ye, Dev? I heard her say it with me own sound receptors. He's not the father. He's off the hook. Well, I'll be a monkey wrench's uncle. Uh, hey, I gotta split. He do that, sawbones. As for me, I think I'm gonna make a milkshake. Yeah. A milkshake sounds nice. A banana milkshake. <laughs> oh, I love bananas. But I've got to hurry. I'm out of here. Out of the way, num nuts. Well, who'd have thunk it? Excelsior isn't Bundle's father. Well, I'll be. <laughs> I just gotta tell somebody. See, it wasn't me at all. It was Captain Jammer. It was all his fault. So if you want to blame someone, talk to him. Hold it right there, GD. It was you who jumped to the wrong conclusion. Yeah, nobody's perfect. What are you going to do? Strap me to the outside of the ship? So I made a tiny mistake. One that could have cost me my marriage. Nah, you're having problems anyway. You can't blame me for everything, you know. I suppose you're right, GD. You're off the hook. Huh, as easy as that? Yeah, now go away before I change my mind. You betcha. Are you alright, sugar bumps? I don't know, Excelsi. I feel like such a fool lately. Oh boy, and I thought this soap opera was over. <laughs> What's happening now, Payload? Briscoe, I think it's about to get really sad, chum. Are you too? Going to get a uh, divorce? I don't know, Zimtron. Are we Excelsi? Are we through? Do you still love me, sweetums? Yes, of course I still love you, Cherry Cheeks. No more running around moon-eyed for Captain Jammer? No, he's not so heroic. He's just crazy. You're my real hero, my armor gorgeous bear. Oh, please. Oh, I think they're kind of cute with the pet names. You would. Then let's celebrate our making up with some toast. Where's Popsicle when you need him? He's on vacation this week. Yes, he's gone to an appliance convention. I think you meant let's make a toast, Sweet Switches. Oh, yeah. Well, then has anyone got any champagne? Oh, 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 I know where the captain hides some. Hey. I know! Why don't we go on a second honeymoon? I don't even recall you two taking the first one. It was a time and space thing. Oh, I see. I think. Well, I don't. And what a shock that is, Briscoe. Is it? Is this soap opera finally over? Will Squeak and Excelsior ever return from their second honeymoon? Will Butch hand in his list of bots to Duke? Will Captain Jammer force everyone to drink banana milkshakes? And what the heck happened to Shin White? All these questions and more may or may not be answered in the next exciting episode. You have been listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 307, Bot Opera. Written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, Kyle Bors, and Vince Stegen. Which starred, in order of appearance, the news announcer, Jack Ward, Fizz Gizzet, and Frag Meltdown, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Rob, Captain John Tatterzak, Excelsior, Shane Harris, Hutch, Joe Thomas, Briscoe, Kyle Boers, 
Zimtron, Jeff Niles, Payload, Captain John Patterzak, TD, Ellie Hirschman, Zinx, Jim Barber, Squeak, Sally Wiggett, The Narrator, Steve Anderson, Jillbot, Danny Cutler, Rusto15, John Morse, Excalibrator5, Danny Cutler, and Captain Brick Jammer, Shane Harris. The title music was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Firstcom. The associate producer was Kay Wu. The sound designer, post-production editor, script editor, executive producer, and director was John and Patrick Russell. The Rob Report was written and produced by Captain John Tatterzak, who retains all rights to the character and concept. The series, Robots of the Company, was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell. And the copyright is held by Purple Unicorn Productions and its parent company, Dream Realm Enterprises, all rights reserved. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the expressed written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. Thank you for listening. We invite you to visit us on the web at dregold.net. For more information, please, please email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. Go on, do it. We were melodramatic during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as things get dangerous for the robots of the company in a reasonably exciting episode entitled Project Meltdown. This is the creditor, as always, asking you to stay tuned. to you by Purple Unicorn Productions, a division of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2007, all rights reserved. And that's all we have for this week's show. Thanks so much for those who love us. We're equally glad that you take the time to add us to your Pickle Podcasts, your iTunes tunage, or your direct downloaders. Next week, another first for the society. We're doing our best to keep seeking the cyber byways and the radio beacons for the very best audio drama has to offer. Until then... I'm Jack Ward with 